Good morning and welcome to our monthly webcast. This is session number 78. I am Samir Mehta, your moderator, and we'll take you through another exciting and hopefully a very educational, complex coronary intervention. Over the last uh, several months, uh, many of you have uh, expressed an interest to watch more bifurcation cases. So today, not only do we have an excellent bifurcation case, but uh, I can tell you, you are uh, in for a master class and a didactic on bifurcations, their precise uh, identification, their uh, description, the, the various methodologies. And uh, without uh, further uh, delay from me, let me take you to the cardiac cath lab where uh, Dr. Kinney and Dr. Sharma are scrubbed in. Uh, Samin, uh, good morning. Good. All right, good morning. I actually, a barman can come closer also. And, uh, welcome. Uh, so, so it's exactly right. It's going to be a master class on uh, on bifurcations. Yeah, but actually, you know what? We are combining two master class in bifurcation and the radial. Okay. As you, I was looking into our archives cases. Last radial case we did was in July 2012. We did three from February to July because of the rival trial. And then kind of we are not done for almost two and a half years. I mean, uh, clearly that. You will see a personal opinion of individual of three of us, and particularly um, Anu, uh, who is the radial uh, not ex not guru. And then on the, my right side, in the care of uh, Mount Sinai Cath Lab, radial guru, uh, Nitin Barman. Nitin, good morning. morning. Who is that 90 plus percent or even the more, even higher number so, of procedures so this, done by radial? Is this something he bought from Chicago? <laughs> Actually, he but did you have a little interest before left? Yeah, no, I started yeah. before. Yeah, he before started here, some, yeah. but clearly, yeah. he had, uh, I would say, uh, really became expert and doing a local uh, workshops and uh, didactic seminars and teaching people. And I really brought, uh, brought that back to the cath lab. And I think this is important. I know that America is trailing behind in the radial intervention compared to the rest of the globe, but uh, we need to catch up. And part of the issue will be the where unconvincingly, which shown that it decreases your vascular complication and bleeding. And that's where the whole issue is uh, all about the radial. So, we'll so when take you're doing transradial, you are uh, still maintaining uh, bivalirudin as the anticoagulant? Yeah, we still continue, although some simple cases because require giving heparin. Uh, we continue uh, if it's a simple straightforward case because you are given heparin for the diagnostic cath. And so, we continue to do the PCI on the uh, heparin, but uh, majority of the cases we do still use uh, bivalrudin. Uh, their issue will come whether it truly will benefit knowing that the bivalrudin benefit is not only decreasing the exercise bleeding, even non-exercise bleeding in all the trials uh, have shown with the AQT and Horizons AMI. So, it not only decreases your exercise, but also non-exercise bleeding. So, I think the bivalrudin does have an advantage even in the radial, although it has not been uh, clearly proven with the latest uh, matrix trial. So, before we go on, maybe I will ask uh, uh, Nitin to just comment on the radial uh, issue uh, in a uh, you know, few sentences, where America is and uh, so and so forth. Sure. Well, you know, I think uh, thanks for that opportunity. I, I've definitely been passionate about this for several years, and I think it's part of a greater strategy for a bleeding avoidance strategy. Um, Nitin, somebody needs to uh, adjust your mask. We are not yeah, hearing you clearly. Right. To you take the mask off? Maybe yeah. just take it off, yeah. Take it off, so yeah. Is that a little bit better? Good. Yeah, now it will be better, much, right? Much better, Nathan. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was and we can, we can oh, see yeah. that handsome young man from <laughs> Chicago. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, you know, this is a, a, a part of a larger strategy, a, a bleeding avoidance strategy, as we know the relationship with bleeding and, um, you know, significant clinical outcomes. Um, uh, has become more and more clear over the last several years. I'd like to stress that it, it's really a radial first strategy, um, which is kind of a kind of buzzwords out there to to understand that there's a uh, it's something that should be considered in all patients. But there's a lot of different uh, uh, variables that would dictate whether or not we would move forward. Uh, originally, I mean, uh, across the landscape in America, as Dr. Sharma mentioned, it's something that's growing. We're, we're definitely still lagging behind. There has been a, a relatively rapid uh, growth of um, the use of the transradial access for diagnostic and coronary inter interventions. Um, the, the most recent uh, 
uh, NCDR sh uh, showed that percentage to be a, about 16 percent uh, of PCI. So um, it's definitely growing. It's, it's probably even greater now. We're definitely seeing uh, patients even uh, requesting this as their, their access. Uh, but again, I, I would stress that particularly in a lab like, like this where there's very complex interventions, um, you know, there has to be a very thoughtful kind of process in terms of determining access. Um, one of the major limitations of transradial access had been some of the limitations in, in catheter, uh, guiding catheter sizing, um, certainly bifurcation le lesions uh, that require a seven French uh, system as we see today uh, would have been something that, you know, uh, only, only three, four years ago we would have been much more reticent to, to do. Uh, certainly the, the equipment advances um, uh, from several companies um, has, has allowed us to kind of increase the percentage of patients, even complex patients that we're doing. I think Dr. Sharma will, will mention uh, uh, through the, you know, the ESC guidelines at least, uh, there's a clear laid out kind of strategy of how to incorporate a transradial um, uh, uh, procedures into your cath lab. One of the big downsides of transradial procedures, um, or at least perceived downsides are increased procedure time, contrast use, and specifically radiation exposure. And that might have been one of the barriers uh, that is limited uptake, um, in addition to some things that are kind of intrinsic in the educational structure. Um, certainly there uh, uh, has been some more recent data that, that, that does confirm there is a, a higher radiation exposure. Um, although, as we'll see when Dr. Sharma presents in his slides, um, the, the difference uh, between transradial and, and transfemoral uh, radiation exposure is narrowing with time and and, and clearly the, the benefits um, both hard clinical benefits uh, cost benefits in terms of length of stay um, you know bleeding risk and the costs associated with subsequent diagnostic tests transfusions um, and certainly just patient comfort in terms of um, you know being able to ambulate um, near immediately and um, uh, so on and so forth has, has really Ex been proven. Excellent, <clears throat> Nitin. Two quick follow-up questions. Sure. Firstly, as a rule, if you are not able to get access via the right radial, will you 100% go to the left radial? That, that's a little bit operator dependent, I would say. I, I certainly would do that. Um, and uh, um, you I know, mean, that's the true sign of a true radial, uh, transradial <laughs> believer. And, and I can tell you there is an extension <laughs> to it, and which is the Spencer's uh, editorial yeah. in one of the radials. He said that he attended a seminar uh, or one conference in Korea right. uh, uh, and then they did a right radial and same could not get, they got to the left radial and could not get to the left radial. Then operator said maybe patient doesn't need a cath. Uh, I would just. Won't even think about uh, the femoral. I, I would just. Maybe patient doesn't need a cath, maybe let's try medical therapy. I would just <laughs> add one more thing actually that, that uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of people that do advocate for, for starting with the left radial. Uh, initially, it's, right. it's certainly a little bit easier. There's less fluoroscopy times. The catheters behave a lot more like transfemoral catheters, and um, and that kind of adds in the, the fact that when, when transitioning to radial procedures, it's important important to incorporate the entire team, uh, the techs, the nurses, um, in terms of setup, different equipment, and things like that. So, Next, a very <clears throat> quick follow-up is, uh, you know, let's uh, remove the word radial and call, cause, call it uh, wrist access. So. How often are you doing the transalnar? Um, we've probably done about uh, 30 or 40 cases over the last uh, year here, and yep. it's generally not a primary access. As you know, the ulnar actually is a larger artery yes. um, than the radial usually, um, the limitations being some um, structures that lie, lie next to it. Um, it's been cases where there's um, a much weaker radial. Um, we, we will sometimes use a trans ulnar if we have a failed trans transradial. And there is some uh, small trial data that shows that even at the same sitting, if you fail with transradial access, it's safe to access the ipsilateral right. ulnar um, in, the same, in the same sitting. So uh, not a huge part here, um, but uh, we do. And the other thing is in those cases, uh, and I'd be remiss not to mention, you know, we, we will use ultrasound before before giving up in terms of access failure uh, and converting to a transfemoral case. Wonderful, Nitin. Uh, you've been such a wonderful addition, and I'm sure you're teaching a lot of fellows uh, the wrist access. Yep, and uh, just to update, actually, we got the latest data from the ACC NCDR. In United States now, the centers which participate in the NCDR, which are 1,400 cath labs, uh, over 1 million procedure, 32% wow. STEMIs are being done by radial, STEMIs only. And uh, the corner, the is, is the elective case is still about 24%. Right. So definitely has growth is happening, but, uh, but clearly where I think it's uh, settling down is the STEMI patients. That's where 
the data I would say will fully support even decreasing the mortality uh, in these patients. With that note, let us go to a little further. Uh, we start with the today's presentation, which is a, you know, again I would say that history repeats. Uh, this is uh, our uh, cardiac cath lab with the uh, news inside Mount Sinai just came out yesterday that cardiac cath lab sets record for excellence. And of course, you see a um, uh, picture of two of us. Why? Because of this. These are the data just presented on November 19th by the state. Uh, we, they are already few years behind and uh, present risk adjusted 30 day mortality RAMR. And you can see here, these are the top 10 centers with Sinai on the top with a volume which is uh, just not double, but uh, about uh, 70 percent of the second institution with risk adjusted mortality lower in both all cases and non-emergency cases. And this is actually never has happened in the New York state since 1995 that if for one year any center has received double star in both the categories because the each year the number are less when three year aggregate could happen. But key is that for the one year getting a double star really set the high standard what is being done at uh, Mount Sinai uh, cath lab. And then we aggregate 2010 to 2012 you really see the big number uh, many other centers have, uh, having a double star, but uh, key we still remain uh, that uh, we continue to do one, two or three categories of uh, the, the aggregate three years and of course, first time both categories of the one year receiving the double star really I would say the establishing the notion that uh, we have perfected the art of PCI that has been my common saying and uh, tremendous uh, work. And of course, uh, these are the numbers uh, of uh, the, our interventionalist, the two star interventionalist at Mount Sinai in last four reports uh, with, the, with the Keeney being uh, two times and myself and one time Moreno. Uh, and these are the number of cases you can see uh, in the New York state, uh, we both still become the number one and number two uh, interventionalist and third uh, and fourth everybody shown that only one other interventionalist got the double star that too only in one category was uh, Dr. Schwartz. And you can see here that, uh, that me, myself and uh, Dr. Keeney both received double star in both the categories which is reported by the New York state. And uh, her being with the extremely, extremely uh, low with the 29 and 21 percent in all cases and non-emergency cases really phenomenal. So Knowing that clearly I, I she has become the safest uh, operator, maybe I will ask her to uh, comment on it, this consistency. Uh, over the year and this is 2012 and of course, uh, uh, in years to come, uh, we know that data will, uh, they should be in the similar way. Anu, you want to comment on the, your success and the report? Yeah, I think uh, just want to highlight um, the under, uh, underscoring why this is repeated here uh, in this lab yeah. and uh, especially, you know, the two interventionalists is uh, the way we pay attention to every case. Uh, every day, no matter how busy we are, how many cases are being done uh, with the help of, uh, of course, the trained uh, uh, staff. Uh, then we have the nurse practitioner and uh, what I call the backbone or the interventional fellows. Yes, first couple of months uh, is rigorous training to the fellows and after that they know every case uh, has to be done the same way. There is no ifs and buts about it. It has to be done the same way. and. Uh, we are there for every case paying attention from the beginning to the end and more important is post procedure also the same. Uh, we have the protocol how they will be discharged and uh, follow through uh, of this patient. I think the key, key thing that makes a difference is that uh, not just doing the case, yes you pay attention when you are doing the case uh, everything, but take the patient as a whole and uh, so you taken care of the uh, coronary, you done the stent, but the patient might have other comorbidities. So, follow through the patient, make sure every part of the pa uh, patient's uh, you know, comorbidity has been taken care and that is why I think uh, uh, we are different um, here. And I just want to underscore one other thing is that all the numbers and every data that he is being showing is mostly for the state uh, of New York uh, uh, who follows through. Uh, in the United States and I am not sure if anywhere else in the United States there is something like this and uh, uh, I am proud to say that I am probably, I am the only woman who has uh, achieved that.
Yep, with a 1000, with that great <laughs> note. Wonderful, yeah. Anu. Congratulations. Uh, I, I am personally not surprised because if you look at it, this is case number 78. We've never had a mortality and I, I remember uh, there was only once a complication and yep. uh, and these are probably the, the highest uh, complexity cohort. And, and, and actually what has been shown that the 30 day risk adjusted, the 62 percent of the death occurs in hospital, right. but 38 percent occurs in 30 days. It's a very, I thought it would be like 80, 20, but over the years that number changed from 60, 65, but 60, 65 percent is in house, but remaining more than one third is all is the 30 day issues. So clearly that it's not only you do a PCI and discharge the patient, so it's the su subsequent follow up doing a good intervention. So patient does not have this catastrophic outcome is a really key to, uh, to really uh, top the chart of this New York State reporting system, which takes the risk adjustment into equation. Wonderful. Good. With that note, this is a great uh, news and I will quickly go through our, uh, the case uh, of today. Uh, we are not, um, we go by our, uh, these are our supporters. Uh, the, this actually, the lot of radial work uh, has been done or devices and so with the Tarumo vascular and uh, we will show that uh, sheath which are being used particularly 7 French. These are our disclosure. This patient is a 77 year old uh, male who presented with mild angina. He did not have much problem until few months ago. Little bit of hypertension takes little metoprolol, no problem, but he has class 1 angina and has a stress echo which was positive. And uh, what we do nowadays is the Seattle angina questionnaire for all patients for coronary artery disease, not for heart failure for angina. Now, PC say, what is this Seattle angina questionnaire, which used to be so extensive, require 30 minutes to fill, but then there is a modified version has been approved by the, and has been endorsed by American Heart Association, which is called SAQ7, which is a simple seven questions, and it gives the number based on the ability, your physical limitation, use of nitroglycerin, how satisfied with your lifestyle and so, and gives a number from 0 to 100. 100 means patient is very well doing good. Zero means patient is disabled and barely can do anything. So the, clearly the purpose and it correlates very well with the angina class, Canadian class. The purpose here is because we have come under scrutiny again that many of these patients angina class is very subjective. So as a part of the research tool also, you take your questionnaire, num SAQ 7, whatever the number comes out and then you ask those same question one month later and then see the difference in your SAQ number. Uh, in these cases. So really will show the impact of your intervention. So we started this for last two, uh, two months only and hopefully in next six months uh, we will give you some data that how uh, we are doing in terms of changing the patients uh, and the overall the Seattle Anjana questionnaire numbers by the intervention. So I think this will be a great tool which goes beyond just your angina class. So this patient has a 80, 80 means only mildly disabled. Uh, and of course, uh, the cath done showed two vessel disease, which we'll show you. And uh, he was on very little medicine after PCI. We have put him on multiple medications and so. Uh, and Anu can show the angiogram. So this is where we have the left side. Left main is okay. Cirque he had a disease, uh, and actually we did a fraction flow reserve, which was positive and had a PCI of the Cirque. The LED also, yeah. And. This is where the LAD, I think uh, we called prox, you know, the same bifurcating uh, disease. Um, we are, what did you call? One, one, zero one, 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 zero one, one. Yeah. Okay. So you, uh, the disease starts proximal to the bifurcation, distally maybe less than 30 percent, but definitely involves the diag and uh, important is the size of the, the diag uh, as large as the LAD. So it is a very important vessel. Yeah, this is a good I one. think this is a good view which will show that the ostium of the diag is involved. And this is the right coronary ejection, which is uh, non-obstructive and a normal ear. Yep. Yep. So most of the cases we are using with a tiger and some dilated route you can use Jackie, but people have found that easier to use two catheters left and right quickly, it will require some exchange. But we, I, I say that you know most of the time we are able to do the diagnostic cath using the tiger catheter and which is a sheath which is expendable, right? The same sheath for the 5 and 6 French? Uh, 
Um, this, this is the no, this is seven, but otherwise. Seven. Yeah, we would use the, the uh, five, six slender so sheet. Nice we were the, mostly the Terumo, the Terumo ones, ones yeah. Nitin? Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty, so pretty, uh, pretty consistently the Terumo sheets, which uh, obviously are a thinner, thinner walled sheath with a larger inner diameter relative to the outer diameter. So uh, we know that the, the sheath artery ratio is a big component of radial artery occlusion, which is one of the other, obviously, downsides. And this is the seven yeah. French? Uh, no, uh, six French sheath, that is the seven French diameter, so we can use the seven French guide, radial. Yeah. And you know that a lot of people use the, the sheathless guide, but we have used some. Yeah. We yeah. should did it during the time of symposium also, but it is a very stiff. Yeah. So no, I would no, not uh, recommend. More important, it's very painful. Painful yeah. to the patient. patient has a lot of pain. Um, and if there is any movement, uh, you know, getting the guide, moving the guide is, is a direct contact with the skin of the patient. So we have gone away from that. The other, the other point I mean, is this works a, out very well. Very well. And also it gives you the same range of guide catheter tip options that you would have uh, using your standard soft. Oh, great. Well, that, this is the, uh, what were you showing? Oh, that, that's, that's an example, I think, of the, I think that's what yeah. the, oh, the, the sheathless guide, which, um, which really it's a 2.5 millimeter outer diameter um, and uh, 2.0 about uh, inner diameter. Um, but again, we've moved a little bit away from that, a very stiff guide. Um, and as Dr. Kenny was mentioning, uh, you know, quite painful going up the arm. Um, I think we'll talk about what we have here in this case. Okay, so we'll see it how uh, our then, so we'll go in with a routine strategy. All the guides are available if people want to use it. Uh, this particular case has syntax score of 14 and had an intervention uh, of uh, the circumflex uh, and uh, post dilated with the with the 2.75 for 20 premier, promus premier post dilated by the 3 or 12 NC quantum and today is the LAD diagonal bifurcation with that radial interventional approach. So basically, it will fill into appropriate criteria uh, of one to two vessel with the positive stress test. And uh, with that note, uh, I think what we do uh, before we go on uh, to start the catheter, I really briefly talk about the radial. And then we'll uh, continue uh, live advancing the, uh, the seven French guide because we always used to worry about putting a seven French guide into the radial. But I think the overall the data are there now. Yes, maybe a little more radial occlusion, but it's a good size radial artery, particularly in the male, a uh, young male that you can use the uh, seven French guide. Two points we are going to talk today. One will be the radiation exposure during radial versus femoral procedure, Re latest uh, paper from uh, Lancet. And second is the bifurcation two stent dedicated strategy technique. More importantly, this will be like a interventional journal club to go to the step by step of the two stent dedicated strategy so that fellows who are attending this, will be looking at it uh, today, uh, joining us or will look at later, will be a resource material for them to go step by step as you mentioned earlier. So basically, radiation exposure, as you know that numerous papers have shown in the past, the radiation seems to be a little more with the uh, radial versus uh, Femoral, but this has been put into a clear cut perspective in the latest Lancet article of a radiation exposure to the arterial axis site for the diagnostic coronary angiography or PCI. 24 studies were included in the analysis and basically showed that the fluoroscopy time is about 1.14 second minutes higher with the radial versus femoral for the PCI about 1.04. Both are statistically significant, but at the same time also show the, they shown that it is dependent on the operator's experience. So clearly that those who have done more than 250 transradial access, the difference becomes 7 percent, but if it is um, less than 250 is kind of a cutoff, it is 13 percent, but it still remain around uh, that uh, one, uh, the one minute or, uh, or uh, slightly lower. Now this actually is a very interesting uh, the figure which really tells that the, the size of the study which is the your uh, size of the circle and over the years where these 24 studies have been presented. As you can see that femoral majority of the studies have favor femoral in terms of difference in fluoroscopy mean time that you are lower with the, the femoral versus radial. Of course, some studies are outlier, but very important that that difference which used to be 2 minutes in back in 1994-96 now has become 30 seconds. So this is a, a really testament to the field ex advancing that clearly we had narrowed the gap by the experience and of course the special techniques being used for pre preventing the radiation uh, during the uh, radiation exposure during transradial access. Then for, to the patient, Kerma area product, also the similar message comes that uh, statistically borderline 
uh, trend versus uh, significantly higher with the radial versus femoral and then the as far as the operator con concerned. So, we of course, we are worried about the patient, but we are more worried about ourselves <laughs> as you can see the many of these four randomized trials have really looked into it plus minus answer, but I put it very simple that overall you combine this is the millisiever 107 uh, with the transradial 74 with the transfemoral in last 8 years of trial. So, clearly that for the for the interventionalist you get a less, less radiation dose uh, with the uh, with the uh, transfemoral versus transradial. So, they basically sum it up the transradial access was associated with a small but significant increase in radiation exposure in both diagnostic and interventional procedure compared with transfemoral access. Since differences in radiation exposure narrows over time, the clinical significance, significance of this small increase is uncertain and is unlikely to outweigh the clinical benefit of transradial access. Now, clearly that Anno is uh, very skeptical about the whole uh, radiation, uh, uh, the actually particularly the radial access, largely because of the radiation and the procedure time. And do you want to comment on this? I do not I think if we go back uh, to our uh, live cases, uh, I do not know if uh, you know um, uh, Dr. Mehta remembers every time if people ask me to comment on uh, radial, of course uh, radial is very good for two reasons, decreased bleeding, uh, all you need is one femoral uh, hematoma or pseudo aneurysm and the patient will not like you for the rest of your uh, the life, uh, since they can see it they will not uh, know what was done in inside and they uh, cannot figure out how complex procedure you have done, but what they see is what they believe in that you did a bad procedure uh, compared to the radial uh, which is good that um, you know decreased um, uh, vascular access that is uh, one good thing uh, about uh, radial and of course the patient uh, comfort and we know nowadays patients as well as the referring doctors uh, somehow the, the re are requesting we need radial radial. For me and you have seen the amount of procedure we have been doing, the complexity that we are doing, um, uh, the way we are doing the procedure, I still think femoral uh, is better for us um, and uh, if you see right there, I think uh, for uh, people who are doing complex procedure, radiation exposure is very high. Uh, already we have very high radiation exposure because we have our number of procedures we do is uh, very high uh, and the complexity of the cases. You are very, cl uh, we are closer to the. Um, Radi uh, uh, radiation when you are doing the radial procedure compared to femoral you still may be uh, uh, away and that definitely will uh, matter as you number of years uh, that you are doing the procedure. And uh, I think like Nitin mentioned definitely probably left radial uh, is a better access, the catheter available are better, uh, placement of the catheter everything is uh, better, but I always say if you are going for left radial access you need to get a spa that day and night you know, every time massage, yeah, you are, uh, for, no matter what you know it is very difficult to find a patient who has a flat belly. So, you get the radial axis you say we bring the uh, left arm this side it never, you can never get the left arm and uh, you are all over the patient probably more radiation and uh, develop a back pain um, which uh, right now uh, we do not have it despite having done so many procedures. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean that is the main <laughs> reason, two yeah. reasons is radiation exposure and left radial is uh, back pain, Look, I, I, uh, I avoid radial. I know you bring up a very important consideration about the radiation uh, with, with the number of procedures you do, I bet you, you glow in the dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There uh, are two quick questions yeah. I have to take, uh, one uh, Dr. Syed uh, from Oman, uh, he is emphasizing that uh, you know the fellows and all of us should be trained in both uh, radial and femoral and I think he is absolutely right. Uh, uh, Nitin, uh, question directed at you, in the elderly which catheter do you use to hook the left system and uh, specifically this is Dr. <coughs> Ajay from India mentioning that uh, it is much harder to do it with the EBUs. Um, you know it is, I, I, I really use the same. Uh, catheters, uh, irrespective of that, although we definitely understand there's often more tortuosity in the subclavian that can be more challenging. Um, there are several centers that if patients are older uh, than 75 or also we didn't mention, mention short stature uh, would uh, default to a left radial first approach. The catheter I, uh, I use generally from the right will, will downsize our catheters and, and we like the, uh, the VL catheters here as you probably have noticed in prior cases. Um, it's a softer tip and um, it's more for me about the technique of engaging and, and uh, folding the catheter and the ascending aorta and using a wire to, to unfold it into the left sinus and, and then the left main. Um, 
but it can be challenging. I think that uh, certainly with more experience, the, the, uh, the access failure uh, conversion rate goes down. The, uh, even tracking the arm arteries up to the AC and aorta uh, as, a, as a reason for converting goes down. But, but certainly engaging the coronary and, and guide support still is a problem even, I think, in very experienced hands. Yeah, and I think that that consistently remain, 6 to 8 percent uh, conversion uh, or crossover. <coughs> But clearly, that we, as a general rule, we go to a half size smaller by the radial. Maybe left probably will be about the same, but right definitely half size smaller. And secondly, really very tortuous and so. I am telling, knowing that uh, in India, we have Akari guide available 1.5 and even 2O. Left system can be done by the right Akari 1.5 and 2O. So, we have, I have done few cases here. We have a very narrow route. Your um, plots will never, sorry, your VL never opens up. And I will never advise to give uh, use implants for the left system. Right, maybe, but definitely not left. But Akari 1.5 and 2 can be used for that purpose. With that note, we continue ours because we are ready to get to the cases. And uh, best, there are a lot of uh, nice articles which have been published on this field. This is a nice uh, core curriculum by the CCI, uh, and really goes to the steps that how can you reduce radiation exposure during transradial. Besides do having a general measures. Use low intensity fluoroscopy, low frame rate, increase distance from the image intensifier, extra tubing. So, you can have to the patient's foot size. So, <laughs> use a long tubing, utilize standard shielding, led, uh, special, particularly for the radial, we have the radial specific radiation drape, use a radiation board, under table ladder drab, uh, flaps, and then of course, avoid routine fluoroscopy uh, and cine of upper arm unless there is a resistance. And also, what is the recommendation is use left radial approach in patients more than 75 years of age and short stature. This is easier, less radiation and so and so forth. And also another consensus document from uh, European society uh, to the same effect. Latest data from annals of internal medicine for STEMI and acute coronary syndrome has shown consistently lower mortality, lower bleeding, lower vascular complication also no difference in MI. Crossover rate of 8 percent uh, has been shown. So clearly the safety MACE point of view the technique of the radial is superior to femoral, the rest of the issues is with the uh, radiation and all this I have emphasized. So, this has made to the guidelines, that is a two-way indication and particularly for the, uh, in the acute MI, uh, in the European guideline, they make it a special preferred approach, particularly in the patients with the primary PCI. With that note, I think they are ready to start and I will go to the second point uh, later uh, and so, uh, we are, we are start. Yeah. So now with, there is a wire across okay. and let's, going with the let's seven try French. Let's do it without floor off. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is this? The guide? This is uh, a so seven French, is a seven French VL3. 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 VL3O guide. So as soon as we take engagement and I will come back to my second point uh, of the bifurcation. So going smooth. Yep. Now we can see. Anu, if this was a heavily calcified uh, bifurcating lesion and you needed uh, rotational ablation, you think uh, as easy through through radial access? No, I think once you get the guide in, it's not an issue. No, it is easy, but the same. I think having uh, a rota, rota here, river. We have this extended board. Um, this one, rota, and sometimes what also we feel is uh, imaging to get those. Uh, devices right here could be some issue, but otherwise no problem. I think also particularly with the uh, mother-daughter catheter systems, some of those more tough cases have yes. become yeah, more you doable. Can use, uh, with those, so we are ready here and uh, now you want to say the LAO cord to really see where how proximal we should or, bring? Uh, cor no. Cordal, yeah, cordal. Yeah, because we need I to. I think we have to come up to the ostium. If you look at the the length of the LED strand. Give one new, yeah. The we actually we have emphasized that we are going to uh, uh, use a two dedicated stent. Oh, one second. Mm -hmm. Two stent strategy. Yeah. Ready? Pull the guide line. Pull the guide line. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Actually, proximally is okay. Right, it's the, the it doesn't need to come back up to the ostium. You can just uh, like five millimeter from the ostium. Do you agree? 28. I think this is a good, okay. uh, good view. Very and nice uh, while view they are going the to so you are of the diagonal, yeah, yeah, very angulated diagonal, and clearly because large size. So actually, both are about a 2.75 to 3 millimeter uh, vessel. So that will be the our goal and the strategy which one we are going to use. Let them do. Yeah, let, they can wire it up one second. Let's go to the bifurcation. You know, a lot has been written about the bifurcation technique. Uh, in terms of uh, the uh, how in the model you see the stents getting deformed by using a two stent technique and so and so forth. This is a very nice review article. I have given this reference. The optimal strategy is still being continued. And of course, a uh, uh, question comes whether two stents are better than one. And if two stent, which technique? I think only one which has really made to the final is the final uh, uh, rounds will be the DK crush uh, compared to Coulot. Now three are data of the left main, basically showing that complex left main bifurcation uh, versus simple complex have higher event rate compared to simple, uh, and so which is expected, and uh, which is the complex is 29 percent. What is the complex left main bifurcation where there is a side branch 90 percent stenosis and more than 10 millimeter length? And of course, the main vessel more than 25 millimeter calcified uh, and uh, so an angulated less than 45 degrees. Uh, clearly, those are the complex cases which makes about 29 percent. And more importantly, that your outcome of the crush versus culotte is dependent on uh, these simple versus complex. Clearly, the simple with a DK crush with a mace rate of 5.8 percent, which is double with the culotte. And once you go to the complex, you can see the culotte has a very high. Uh, mace rate largely because of very high TVR of 41 percent. So clearly the DK crush has come out uh, superior. Second issue always comes, we used to worry about two stent versus one stent largely because the data of the first versus second generation and we, these are the three studies with the COVID-2, excellent and resolute chorea really talking about the first and second generation large number of patients and here basically showed the target lesion failure or patient uh, dependent cardiac outcomes uh, that basically showing that one stent versus uh, two stent approach that while there is a difference in the first generation in the second generation stents there is uh, nothing. So both TLF as well as patient observed cardiac outcomes and same thing the individual endpoints of the TLF while the curve separates between one and two stent in the first generation with the second generation stents remains identical. So I think overall it seems to be the two stent technique. Uh, is coming out quite well. Second and the important point remain is that what you can do, we always have jailed the wire. Now there are data that you can jail the semi inflated balloon to prevent the side branch closure. So here you have a stent in the main vessel, leave the balloon at two atmosphere in the side branch. You deploy your stent and then you take the wire and out, uh, wire and balloon, recross it and then do a proximal optimization technique. Key is that not only wire. You can leave a small deflated balloon in the side branch uh, to prevent the side branch occlusion. Uh, they did not put the case in. Uh, with, the, with that note, I think while we are wiring, uh, we need to uh, uh, actually I'm, uh, the individual cases we are going to put a, you want to put a wire for the time being? We are wiring here and then we are going to show those step by step techniques uh, of the bifurcation. I don't see the benefit of that uh, leaving uh, the balloon in the side branch <laughs> based on what they have uh, shown us. We just going to wire, I think you can use your workhorse wire uh, to go into the LED, but uh, you may need a fielder, the specialty wire to get into the. Um, so which wires are you deciding? I'm, uh, we are going with the run through, run through in the LED. And then we go with the field load. Nathan, to the which case uh, will you not do a transradial? Um, I mean, I'll consider. Patient does not have a <laughs> radial, both arm yeah, and that's pretty much <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, you know, certainly bilateral IMA cases. Um, you know, uh, post bypass with uh, a pedicalized uh, lima and rima, uh, but even those we'll still try. Um, Cases which definitely need uh, left ventricular uh, assist device or something? Um, even those will uh, I mean obviously. You can do radial uh, PCI and, and uh, the yeah. I mean, there have been cases yeah. now that we are doing uh, many of the acute MIs radial for any reason they need uh, 
you know po post procedure during procedure balloon pump or uh, impella the only only negative point is that you will be doing uh, arterial access femoral arterial access on anticoagulation full yeah. anticoagulation but you just have to be careful which uh, extent technique you are planning to do here so then we can go uh, step by step sorry for uh, Hmm? You put no, a I think no? no, no, we are wiring both. Okay. Um, so I think once the reason I think if you uh, say this is a definite a true bifurcation lesion, which means the side branch, the size of the side branch, but more important is the ostium of the side branch has disease. So when the ostium of the side branch has more than 80 percent disease and a large size vessel, um, approach best would be to have a two stent uh, technique. Uh, of the two stent technique that uh, Dr. Sharma just mentioned and what we are going to do right now would be um, mini mini or a micro crush technique that uh, which will be uh, we will go step by step. Okay, go to the class, the presentation again. Good. Why there is an issue with the color? Yeah. Can't, Can't see the attach it a little better. Well. This is I think is the connection. Huh? Usually yeah. colors are very clear. It's hard to see the plaque. Yeah. Looks like wire, jaundice. You can see the colors are good? No, still the same issue. That's very unusual. Mm, I think you have to get another run through itself. Okay, good. Okay, so this uh, you see that this is the fielder wire. Hmm. Fielder wire went into the dyad. Good. Okay. So let's go now. Anyway, let's put this color so that we go to this technique before we go on further. So you can uh, see the Medina classification right there, where uh, you see based on where the disease is, you give the number zero or one. So you either have 1, 1, 1 or what we see here actually would become in this particular case is 1, 0, 1 and that is what we are uh, looking at. Good. Okay, let us go to the slides now. Looks to be some issue with the… Can you see the slides? No, but let us see. Huh? No, 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 no. Let it be red. Whatever it was coming earlier, that's okay. Yeah. It's never happened. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is, will be no good. Is Elena there? Call Elena from there. Can't see the contrast of the. No, no, no. This is no good. Why don't we finish the case and we show the slides later? The, those pictures he gave, the slides this morning, to take it to them. We are going to play it there. Yeah, yeah. What, so what happened I now? think this is okay now. Huh? That's it. That's it. Yeah, it's, you, we see it very clearly. Okay, but that's good. So let's go through it. Uh, Medina basically, uh, the where the blockage is, uh, we give it one, otherwise… Uh, uh, zero. Zero. And uh, the true bifurcations are? Now you true start. bifurcation is where you have side branch involvement. So if you can see that you have a 0, 0, 1 or you have 0, 1, 1 and then you have a, oh, that is 1, 0, 1. This is uh, what we are dealing with today and the other one is 1, 1, 1. So now we will go over the various steps uh, when we have a dedicated uh, stu uh, two stent uh, technique. Uh, this is the old uh, classic uh, T stent technique, which is a typical T, uh, where uh, I think everybody has to be clear which part of the T are you going to do first. The uh, the low, uh, the arm of the T is the one that you do the side branch first. So essentially, what you'll do is you'll wire both the main vessel, the side branch. You will pre-dilate the side branch, and then you will stent the side branch. Now this is where you can have two different uh, modification that when you are stenting the side branch, you can leave a balloon in the main uh, vessel uh, or just for protection. You deploy the side branch uh, stent and then you take out the entire uh, uh, you know SDS uh, and the wire out. Then you can go back and place the stent in the main vessel. 
Now, the, the problem in this curve, a particular technique is the same when now we are going back with the strength of the main vessel, the strength may not go depending on uh, how much coverage you have of the ostium. If a little bit more of the strength is sticking out, definitely the main vessel uh, strength will not go. You may have to pre dilate and then go with the strength, but the end is uh, you have to do a final kissing balloon. This is a classical T stenting. An idea and should be that you keep both the stents at the same time, but to avoid that issue, with that's the T modified T. Started, that put both the stents at the same time. No, no, that, yeah. that we can say in classical T, you will not place both the stents at the same time, it is called modified T, the which we will be doing it right Playing now up. here. Can they? Good, okay, good. Then move this one. So now it is a go back to uh, uh, that uh, this is our uh, the T stenting. Now we go to the second is the reverse T stenting. Yeah, or the mod uh, reverse T, or we call it as a modified T uh, stenting, which is uh, right here. Basically, same that uh, the, that uh, you put no. a stent in the main vessel. So this and is, and yeah. then you go uh, open your side branch. You are not happy. Now you want to put it so the reverse T. So you have gone into the side branch and then put a stent there. The T versus the word which will come as the crush later on came that originally uh, everybody used to be worried about the crush, crush of the stent. So the T stenting was preceded, uh, anteceded the crush with like 96, 98, 2000. We never used to do crush. Crush is started in 2001, 2002 by Colombo with the cactus trial and so really to take to the center stage because with the T stenting, you will always, unless it is a 90 degree angle, you may skip or you will lose that uh, ostium. You may not cover the ostium and this is what they found in the cipher bifurcation study also. Restenosis occur in the side branch and occur at that T junction because you miss the ostium because the branch is rarely 90 degree angle. Okay, then your mini crush. No, so that uh, you saw that reverse T. In the reverse T, another uh, modification you can discuss is that when you place uh, the side branch stent, okay. You, uh, you need a millimeter sticking into the main vessel, but if you have more than two millimeter sticking in the main vessel, is what's called as a tap. That was intentional protrusion of the side branch, which we are doing. Uh, the tap. You have one layer of the stent that will be sti uh, sticking in the um, lumen of the main vessel, and then is what we are going to do today. And this is uh, the widely used uh, uh, technique of, of if your angle is not favorable is the mini or the micro crush uh, technique that we are going to do the same. What you do is you pre dilate the uh, side branch and uh, important is both the stents are placed at the same time, the side branch stent and the main vessel stent. So you are avoiding uh, one or two steps here. So uh, you will go deploy the side branch stent which um, millimeter or half a millimeter which is when we call a micro crush sticking into the main vessel, you, de you deploy it then you take out your uh, SDS and the wire out, then you deploy your main vessel stent, you take out the uh, balloon, then you recross and the final kiss. Uh, this is the micromere or the uh, crush technique which we will be doing in this particular case. An idea is that you cover the ostium of the side yep. branch this compared to the T technique. T technique. T technique you can miss and then of course the people had done the step crush also if you have six French guide, so rather putting two stents. You avoid just put a balloon in the main vessel, crush it and then of course put a stent in the main vessel and then do a kissing balloon dilatation. So that is require one stent and one balloon that they call it step crush using a balloon with a six French guide. Then then reverse crush is the same uh, mechanism that, uh, that uh, the reverse T that you had done the main vessel, six French guide, your side branch you did a balloon angioplasty, conventional technique but after end putting a stent in the main vessel you are unhappy with the side branch. So now you have to dilate the side branch so the main vessel struts, bring the stent again few millimeter back into the main vessel so that you, you can crush a little bit and then do a uh, recross, the, and, uh, recross final and final uh, kissing balloon dilatation. So these are the step by step has been uh, made uh, here. Now then double kissing. Yeah, this is uh, the one, one uh, you know, uh, especially good uh, in this particular case also where you have two large vessels. So, if you see here, you pre dilate both, then you place your stent in the side branch with the balloon in the main vessel. You de deploy, you deploy your side branch stent first, and then what you do is you crush it, um, crush the uh, side branch stent. Then, what you have to do is recross and first that is the first kiss, which is a step further down there. Then, you place your main vessel stent, then you deploy your main vessel stent. That is the 
second time you are crushing and then you do a final kiss. Second kiss. Yeah. So, this is the DK crush is the one compared to other two stent technique has shown to be superior uh, in various studies DK crush 1, 2, 3 as you see they go up to 6 uh, with the FFR guidance. Except that multiple stents. Yeah. And Mul if you have large vessel and you have 111 uh, Medina 111 and this particularly helpful if you are, it is a left main with the you know involving a distal left main uh, austral LED austral surf where you can do what is simultaneous kissing stent technique versus V stent technique. V stent is a in if you have 0 1 1. Uh, the difference between the two is the amount of uh, carina you have if it is one about uh, 2 millimeters or less than 2 millimeters we will call V stenting. When you have proximal disease your carina will be longer which is uh, uh, about 5 millimeter or so that will be the simultaneous kissing stent, uh, stent technique which I think we have shown few times in our uh, webcast here. But I will just emphasize once again that after pre dilatation of the both the vessels you bring the stent, the stent has to cover distal lesion in both the vessels and come proximally covering the proximal lesion in the main vessel. So, stent length is little higher particularly of the side branch. It has to overlap the proximal dot has to be identical then you inflate both of them then deflate then your next step is serial inflation. So, 10 atmosphere both which is step 4 then step 5 you deflated the diagonal stent balloon but you inflated the LED stent which is about a 16 atmosphere. It has crushed a little bit of the diagonal, but there is a balloon there which is step 6. Deflate the LED balloon, inflate the air, the diagonal stent uh, balloon and of course, now you have crushed a little bit of the LED followed by the 7th which is simultaneous kissing balloon inflation again at moderate pressure. What happen is with the individual dilatation, you have expanded the stent at that pressure because you cannot go simultaneously both 16 atmosphere where you rupture the vessel proximally. Pro proximal vessel can accommodate two third of the aggregate diameter and of course, you create a carina a little bigger in the SKS and, and V stenting as Anush said will be a 2 millimeter. Then culotte. Yeah, culotte I think is uh, again same uh, very helpful if you have 101 um, stenting uh, technique uh, more for left main large vessel and you have a diagonal and uh, the LED uh, the size would be the same especially here uh, which uh, exactly in this case. So, what you do is you stent from the proximal vessel to the side branch uh, the stent and then what you need to do is go through the stent strut and dilate it very very important. Many people miss this stent uh, uh, miss this step they think you put up a uh, uh, stent in the main vessel to the side branch and now you go with another stent into the main vessel alone the stent is not going to go you got to make the room for the stent to go in you really have to open the strut of the uh, stent that uh, you have placed. So, you have to go with the balloon the size of the balloon is same as the size of the vessel which is if it is LED 3035 that is the size of the balloon you need and you open it well with a 12 to 14 atmosphere. So, you have created uh, a hole in the stent and then you go with the main vessel stent place the main vessel stent and then would be the final kissing balloon. Essentially, you will have two layer of stent in the proximal part of the the main vessel before the uh, bifurcation. Um, but I think important thing in all this bifurcation technique that we mentioned right now is the final kissing balloon. With a two stent approach. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we are ready here. Uh, we have wired both of them and uh, this one will be uh, we will update uh, our uh, you know we have the slide set uh, and will be. And uh, uh, right now we are going to pre dilate also pre dilation is very important. So, this is I think the question comes atherotomy to the ostium of the side branch otherwise you will never get a good expansion of the ostium of the side branch since we know the ostium of the side branch is always an uh, issue uh, okay. especially with regards to re So, we are going right now with a 275 flex tome to the three diagonal 3 o uh, okay. flex tome to the diagonal. Yeah. It is a good size. I can only hope that the viewers have found this extremely useful as I had advertised before a master class in bifurcations. Okay. Actually, our handbook has all these yes, steps. All of them. Yeah, go on. yeah, that uh, how how has that been uh, distributed and uh, is it being sold commercially? And yes. With a this great uh, success. Is it uh, enough to pay your mortgage? <laughs> Not even to buy a green juice. <laughs> I can't even get a green juice every day. Go here.
the video for us. Yeah. Yeah. We're going second time. So it's a three O low atmosphere. You don't need to go higher. So eight atmosphere. Now what about the LED? Same. Same balloon. Same balloon you yeah. Okay. Down. Okay. Let's we come back in the guide. We see we opened it nicely. You know what? I think looks like. Uh, Mm. Good. Let's go back on the second. No, which one? There, no. Two. Mm. Yeah. Let's go to the LED and tell the stand size. I mean, that's the key now. No, Let's the, play the, last the, the uh, thing was, yeah. I still think we should come up to the ostium because it will look bad. Okay. So, if you want 3, 5, 28 or 32, 32, I think. Take a 32 to the LED, okay. right? 32. Oh, you want 28. 28, 28. Okay, 3, 5, 28 LED and a 3 or 12 in the side branch. I thought you would be using a 3 or for both. LED is actually 3 or yeah. you want to go 3 yeah. or? Yeah. Okay, 3 or. Yeah, same line. So, we are using the same flex to the LED. And you saw it that we did a two cuts, uh, aus the, the and come back. So basically, uh, so the the blades are in different direction. And uh, this is also another question that is always raised that you have a uh, in a wire in the side branch. Can you use a cutting balloon, especially flex stone with the blades in the main vessel? So that this is, is uh, allowed. What you demonstrated, you could, yeah. Uh, you cannot do rota, but uh, this cutting balloon, chocolate balloon, and just sculpt. Yes, can be used. One millimeter back. Yeah. Mm. You want to hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Since it's a short balloon, this is a six millimeter balloon. We have we have to do three inflation to take care of the entire lesion. Go distal a little bit or no? This kind of time. Go distal has a very little disease. Mm. Dissection. Okay, let's put a stand quickly. That's unbelievable. Why? Yeah, so means wow. 20 yeah. years ago, you used to teach uh, using uh, Rio Pro for for these bifurcations. Yes. The Epic trial, huh? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So yeah. both Rapid the bi Epi stent, yes, Epic Rapid. trials, and so this yeah. is unusual that yeah. it has to be a thrombotic lesion. Yeah. Go stent. Yeah. Get us a stent. Get side branch, stand. three or twelve. Yeah. And uh, always the best thing is the same. Go to the side branch first. Since uh, usually the side branch has some kind of an angle, so we have With a 3 or 12 angle. going to the side branch and then we will have the main vessel stand placed. The part of that could be uh, some thrombus. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, could be that we were Probably the wire. noticed with the after the final uh, flex tight. on. Uh, yeah. You know, it was, uh, you know, reasonably tight uh, lesion and we had the wire there for a little while. This is why people watch the CC live cases. Yeah, go. Good. Go to the main vessel now. Ready? Yeah, that's okay. Okay, now okay, this yeah. is a 3 0 12 promus. Yeah. See much now, mm -hmm. no flow. Yeah, no, which is okay. Good. Okay, just to pull back, pull back. You're too yeah. far. Okay, the the hands uh, down. Okay, sure. some die. Now the die extent is sticking out mm -hmm. too much. We should have probably got the flow of the LED. Oh, there it is, good. Yeah, with a balloon and LED, what's up? Advance LED a little bit, yeah. This Where's LED? You? This is LED. Yeah. <coughs> okay. You're happy with good. how the yeah. diagonal strength is there? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. The positioning. It's projecting in there. No, 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 Take too much. Picture. Yeah. 
Okay. 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 So we're taking a picture now. To come back a little bit. All right. I think we'll pull back the tag. Yep. Yeah. Which is the diag? This one? Yeah, this is the one, yeah. I think this is good right now. No, so this is not okay. Right. okay. Going up? Yeah. We pulled back a little yes, bit. Yes, I noticed. Yeah. Okay. Good. 12. Okay, down. Go up again. Down. We are going to remove the wire and the balloon now, SDS. Some die. So, maybe in sure the hundreds of such cases you've done, ever had a problem going back with the wire? Go. Yeah, no, no, the Diagonal wire usually we can. Go. Which one? Diagonal more yeah. dissection. Yeah. Just over. Somehow. This Good. Yeah. How high did you go there with the LED? 12. 12. 12. Okay. Yeah. okay. Leave that wire and you take this balloon out. Mm. Okay, he's having uh, some ST changes. Let's come back in the guide. No, we have to get the new one also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a new uh, fielder wire, but I think yeah. the tip of this wire is okay. gone. Okay. Usually, now the uh, fielder wire is in the guide. You can use the same fielder wire to go back, recross. Bring this one in. I don't do it individually. I usually take both same time. You have him put his hand out. No, put his hand I think out. we need to go to the epicranium. No, no. Let's recross. Maybe we needed a longer stent to the, the diagonal. Diag. Yeah. Get a balloon also. 2.512 compliant balloon. Throw that, throw that away. That's what's okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. Go. Ready? Yeah. Now there is some ST elevation still. Any medicine now? Because of the diagonal. No, it could be that we had the wire not for a moment. No, okay, let's cross it. Uh, twin pass or something like that. Yeah. Give him some medicine. Yeah. Between possibilities of dissection and thrombus, it's probably more thrombus. You yeah, think? let's get a, um, a two bolus of integralin also, please. Not any wire. Uh, let's see if this goes. You, you want to get a uh, vasodilators first. Yeah, let's yeah, with the the no, no, not that. I'm saying is let's get a twin, twin pass, pass and yeah. go in with the vasodilator. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, uh, open uh, knife right also. Mix the knife right. You want to go to the view? Okay, now what you Let's need to do balloon. is just give a balloon. Yeah. We just go for yeah. back forth. Planning to go a little more distally there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. Get rid of this wire. You have a twin pass ready? This the previous, uh, this is a new balloon, no? We this is a new yes. balloon compliant, and same. Compliant. Now if you are to recross, right. go with the compliant balloon. Yeah. New compliant balloon. And we Don't even do, think of a We didn't have any balloon earlier right, anyway. Right. It was only yeah. the flex room. Only the flex room, yeah. Good. Yeah, see? It went easy. Good. It's amazing. As yeah. soon as uh, there was less flow in the wire, uh, we had more viewers. Yeah. Yeah. Good. You had Ready? more viewers? Yeah. Yes. To see it. Good. Ready? Bring the guide in. Yeah. We take a picture. So they want to know. Yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, exactly how you would handle it. You know, I'm sure there were some people watching and uh, heard. Now, that right that now, all you need is vasodilators. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So use yeah. nitro or uh, yeah, yeah, after Let's before, some other before that. Go, go, yeah, go, go. Cranial, if you want. Let's get vasodilators. Get the flow back before we go kissing. And three o, yeah, and three o fifteen. Can I just do it from the guide or? Anu, did you use nitro Not yeah, That's what we are. But before we give nitro when you have slow flow, you need to have a micro catheter to go distally. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have the twin pass. Yeah, put his hands down. Give me the knife. We can call one extra nurse in the room. You want to take a picture here? Yeah, yeah. You want to. Put your hands to the side. No, no, no. Move to the side. Good. This yeah. view will show us everything. Yeah. 
Low mag, low mag, low mag, so you can see it. Okay. So just low flow, no dissection. Things looking good. Yeah. So we given a lot of verapamil. No, we are giving verapamil now. There's still some ST elevation. Good. So good. Let's get other balloon. We are okay. You want to kiss without giving yeah, yeah. vasodilators? I will give more before we. Uh, no, but we, it's coming down. Everything. Yeah. Right. Okay, get us a 3 O high yeah. pressure balloon. I have a 3 O 15. Yep. Give us. Can you? What do you want? Okay. Mm. I reposition the valve. Mm. Good. STs are better, patient is less restless. on the back, keep it like that. Do we have the groin prepped or no? I think another one uh, also important, even if you are doing radial, whatever reason you need to have a groin prep for any emergency you need a, a immediate uh, uh, you know balloon Absolute pump access. 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 Yeah. Yeah. STs are way better. Oh. Any simple uh, lesion can become sour. So okay. Planning but to do the final kissing. Yes, yes. Yep. right now. So we have a three-five high-pressure balloon in the LAD, a two-five in the diag. No, three-o. Individually first. Three-o. Three-o in the diag. Both diet. are three-o. Okay, down, 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 down. Pull back diet, the diag. Distal. Yep. Oh, no, that's a two-five. Okay, go. Yeah, it's a two-five component. Yeah. Which one? The, oh, the diagonal. The diagonal, diagonal is two point five. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Down. No. See, this is a typical. No, I no think. Personal, yeah. <laughs> So I'm pulling back. Okay, go up now. We go a little serial because that allows you to mm. hold the one balloon there and go slowly. Now, who is the, you go high? Diag go high. Can go up to 12, 14. Eight. Good. And LED uh, can LED. go more. More. LED can go 18. Okay. Yeah. Down. Good. So we all done. Right off the You taking a picture? Yeah. Outstanding. Absolutely yep. wonderful. So more medicines. I think the miracle drug here was the, the vasodilators. And the, I think just the crossing that uh, diagonal. Right. Because of the, by, I don't think it was ever a dissection. It was just a lot of uh, slow heart flow heart. from the thrombus. So the, uh, the verapamil which we use routinely worked out very good. Now we actually have nipride also if you want. We can just give a regular nipride. I don't think we need any uh, the twin pass. Yeah. Yeah, one second. Oh, let me put this one one second. No, no, I just want to see. Did we do a micro crush or a mini crush? <laughs> Ready? Give one more Neil. We need to go to LA Cordal. No, Cordal is the one we'll tell you. So using in the final kissing, uh, what uh, you, you, the wire sure. you had used a 2 5 for the diagonal, no? Question. Yeah, 2 5 yeah. to the diagonal. No, but sure. question is do you need to use a bigger three, balloon? 3 okay. would be absolutely no. an overkill? No, no, no. no uh, means first time maybe overkill, may not go. Looks uh, to me, I think you are done. Yeah, it looks very good. Nice expansion. Yes. Good lumen, ostium even nicely open. And that too, I, we always Cutting contribute to a flex tome that you have done an atherotomy PTC at the ostium. Right. EKG is back to normal and the uh, patient is comfortable. Okay. You know, having watched so many of these no, cases no. where I have watched you do no, the no. vessel preparation, no. uh, I bet mm -hmm. you this would be a great instructional site whenever we have a PVS available. Yes. <laughs> to prepare, prepare the vessel I think is the entire key and uh, I am I, sure majority of the operators would not have gone with uh, using any atherotomies or uh, even the flex stone. Okay, let us come back to our closure. We had yes. a good discussion, uh, didactic and more important step by step approach of the two stent techniques. So take home message, one about the radiation exposure during radial versus femoral. 
that recent meta analysis confirmed the notion that radial axis is associated with higher radiation exposure to patient as well as to the operator and higher fluoro time and procedure time as we saw. It appears that with the increasing operators radial experience and in recent years applying measures to reduce radiation exposure during radial especially during radial access this gap is reducing. So, clearly the long term effect unless it is a very busy doing a 1500 or 1000 interventions is a different, but in a day to day routine uh, even your 30 seconds more of your 200 cases does it make any difference is need to be seen. Second, the various two stent strategies using second generation DES have shown that when used appropriately and correctly two stent strategy is no longer inferior to one stent strategy and that again hence uh, interventionalists should identify bifurcation lesions likely to require two stents and plan accordingly with one's preferred two stent technique and that is what I say. The debate should not be one or two stents, debate should be can you identify lesions which will require two stents and we know that that occurs in about 25, 30 percent of cases like this case you will plan with a two stent rather than using it bail out and so with that three questions following statements are true for the radiation exposure between radial access versus femoral flow except fluoro time is higher with the radial versus femoral uh, with operator experience the difference in fluoro times become lower between radial and um, the femoral axis. There is a lower radiation to operator with radial versus femoral axis, procedure time is higher with radial versus femoral axis and the lastly the radiation exposure can be minimized with various strategies especially during radial axis. So, clearly the one is the wrong answer which should be very clear. Second, following two stent bifurcation strategy allowed to leave the wire in the side branch. One is the crush, cool out T stent, SKSV or modified T because which wire, which technique you can leave the wire while deploying the two stent technique is the question. Lastly, following two stent strategy has shown to be superior to other two stent strategy in the randomized trial, DK crush, cool out, V stenting, T stenting and mini crush. With that note, we con conclude uh, our uh, both uh, case presentation, the lectures and the uh, didactic discussion. Uh, Samin, Anu, congratulations. Uh, Nitin, thank you for joining us and good luck with uh, with training the transradial and uh, the wrist access to all your fellows. Uh, we will conclude today. Happy holidays uh, to our viewers and we will see you in the new year on January the 19th.